signatures of faith. Like the handwriting on the wall, our Christian lives are supposed to be emblematic of what this Christian life is all about. This man, James, it's impossible to truly understand him because he was caught in a very difficult situation, this James. Caught in the situation between temptation, sin, and human nature. In verses 1 and 2 again, if I can read it, James is a bondservant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ. And he writes his letters to the 12 tribes who are dispersed abroad. And then he says, greetings. And then he starts off this magnificent treatise with a very confusing statement. Consider it all joy, brethren, when you encounter various trials. The testing of our faith is not a one-time experience. It is a lifetime experience. Men ponder within themselves the gravity of their faith, the seriousness of it, their ability to continue in it, and the grappling with life's experience. All men do. All women do. The question facing us today is can we move forward and go through this book as we proceed to investigate this important book without backing up a little bit and taking a closer look at James. We need to ask ourselves, is there more information that we need to discover about the author, the date, the audience, before we move on and grapple with the difficulties of his treatise as we look at our lives as Christians? So let's do a quick review and post-discovery in this introduction. We're going to review some things that we spoke about last week a little bit clear. And we're going to see if we've discovered something from last week. First, I'd like to open up with an opening salutation. James chapter 1, verse 1. James, a bondservant of God and the Lord Jesus Christ to the 12 tribes who are dispersed abroad, Greetings. Now what do we see? The author, the man himself. I believe there's some things that we need to investigate about the author James. Just in the same way that you need to investigate some things about your pastor John. So in the very same way that you need to investigate some things about you yourselves. As we look at James, I want you to look at Pastor John, and then I want you to look at yourselves. We cannot and we must not move into this marvelous book unless we investigate the person speaking. Is the author speaking of his own volition? Is there something that made him what he truly was, which influenced the power of God to work through him to do what he does so well? Number one, his self-identification. He identifies himself as a servant of God. Now this relates to his spiritual position. His spiritual position. I am a servant of God, not a servant of men, not a servant to men, not a servant for men, but primarily and first of all, a servant of God. I am employed by God. There is a personal sense of homage and intimacy with the God whose servant he was. In other words, James is saying, I have a relationship with Jehovah. 
It was not a surface relationship. It was beyond intimacy. It was life or death. He also saw himself as a teacher. For if you just glance down quickly to James chapter 3 verse 1, he says, let not many of you, let not many of you become teachers, my brethren, knowing that as such we shall incur the stricter judgment. In other words, and we'll come back to that later on as we go through the book, but he knew that he was a servant of God, but he also knew that he was a teacher. And so he speaks to those that looked at him And then he puts the tension on himself and says, don't desire this. But beyond that, he makes no further reference to himself in the entire book about being a teacher beyond that verse. I find that interesting. He makes no further reference of it. He, see, see. I want you to know who he is. I'm a servant of God. Oh, and by the way, I am a teacher. In other words, since I am wholly submitted to God, I must not only listen to him, but therefore give out what he tells me to. Second thing about him, he reveals himself as having a vigorous personality. Vigorous personality. By means of a sureness of his position as a leader in the church. In other words, he knew what God called him to do. My mind spins out. Why, John, do you desire the office of a pastor in the first time? Man, I don't desire this. I don't want this. God, I was perfectly happy in my world. Hmm. His crisp, concise, authoritative tone in this book commands the attention of his reader. James said, I'm going to speak to you in a crisp, concise way, drawing you into the dialogue, forcing you to know that his personality, that his life is wrapped up in the words. Because if not, he would be disqualified as a teacher. He could not be. He would merely be some fluid surface kind of individual trying to find his way in the matters of the world. As a keen observer, he was alert to the operations of human nature, and he repeatedly drew lessons from that area in human nature to assist him in ministry. You will see that as he commands our attention through this entire book that he knew human nature. He speaks fluidly about what the tongue does, what the heart is, and all those other things that he touches upon. As I said last week, you cannot, it is very difficult to outline the book of James because he switches his dialogue every sentence. Talking to a church that's going through tremendous difficulty. He knew the fashion of the world that he lived in and he understood the character of men that he came in contact with. He was no man shut off in a monastery with his head in a Bible or in the Old Testament. He was a man that knew the world, knew people, and he loved <coughs> the human exchange. He saw through folks' superficial goodness and their indolent selfishness and their vulgarity and the mischief of their untrained thoughtfulness and he speaks of that throughout the book.